we get a lot of people asking us, how do you attach your puppet heads and your puppet arms to your puppet bodies? In this video, I'm gonna demonstrate how we do that. I'm gonna show you how we connect our arms and head to our puppet body. My name is Patrick and welcome to the Swazzle Puppet Studio. Here's something you may not know about puppets or perhaps you do, but generally, at least the type of puppets that we build, the bodies and the arms and the heads and the legs, if you have them, are generally not permanently attached to your puppet body. They're not connected to each other. The reason why is you wanna be flexible either in a live environment or when you're performing on set. Say so you have a costume change you need to make. The arms can come off, the head can come off, the costume can go on, arms go on, head goes on. Say you need to make an adjustment where you need a hand attached or changed in a different way, you can have them come off. Similar with the head. Say you wanna do a quick change, you have to change a puppet's expression or a head or something like that, this head can come out and you can change it as well. Let me show you how we attach our body um, and our arms and legs. So. This is a puppet body. This is one of our older characters. We use it as a rental. I just undressed it and get in a prep for a new rental. I want to show you the inside of this puppet here. There's some boning on the inside. You see that black Rigeline? That uh, provides support to give this body the nice kind of rotund shape that it has. And you'll notice here, this is where the shoulders are. There's some little holes in the fleece. And on the inside, you can see we have these little plastic almost like buttons with, these have four holes, probably those were wrong, but those are the two holes we're gonna use on the inside of the arm. So that's still the anatomy of the body. The arms that we have here, these arms you see have shoelaces attached to the ends. We like shoelaces because they're durable and they have these handy dandy little plastic nubs at the end, which you can use to thread through your puppet body. So again, I'm demonstrating how we attach puppet arms and heads to a puppet body. A lot of people think they're permanently attached. Generally, they're not. So this is threaded through another gasket here that's like a, like a button. The shoelaces are threaded through like so. These shoelaces are a little longer than we like to use now. Generally, we like to find the shortest shoelaces we can find because we used to tie the puppet's arms on, but we don't do that anymore. We use this little fun tool, which I'm gonna show you, and I think they're great. I don't even know the name of them, but they're really awesome. So. So that's the puppet anatomy of the body and the arms. And then we have our puppet head here. Some people ask, why not just connect the head permanently to the body? Well, you can do that maybe for a smaller character, but I'll tell you why. It limits or it modifies the performance opportunities for the puppeteer. If this head is permanently attached to the body, uh, unlike the human body where we've got muscles and tendons and things that allow us to isolate our head and move our body independently, this is just nothing until the puppeteer imbues it with life. And uh, if it's permanently attached to the body, then every time the head moves, the body would go with it, or every time the body moves, the head would go with it. By separating them, you actually have an opportunity to isolate the two items. You can even anchor the body and rotate the head independently of the body to create different levels of performance. So that's why the, the body and the head are generally separate for this type of puppet. Generally, different types of puppets are different, but this is the kind of puppets that, that we make here in the Swazzle Puppet Studio. So, so that's why, now you might notice this sleeve here. I've, I've done some videos on this before. This is a neck sleeve or a neck tube. There's a ring here, which is, is Rigeline that allows it to always stay open so the puppeteer can put their hand inside. Some questions we ask is, why not just attach the fleece to the body? Well, the reason why you don't do that and you have this instead is this material is designed to have only one way stretch. It doesn't stretch this direction, but it does stretch in this direction, allowing uh, puppeteers with different size arms to get their hands through comfortably. It is attached and glued and stitched to the inside of the puppet head. This is the structure. This is what attaches the body to the puppet head. I'll show you what tool we use. It's very simple, very straightforward, um, and I think you guys might have some even laying around. So the reason why you don't do fleece stitched directly to here is first of all, like I said, it limits the movement, but then fleece, one of the great things about the material of puppet fleece is it has ability to stretch. And if your neck and your head are permanently attached with no neck tube, not only is the fleece kind of weird feeling on the inside, but it will start to stretch and stretch and stretch over time. And if this is permanently stitched to it, there's nothing you can do about it except cut it off, put a new neck on and start over. This actually allows you to lengthen the neck, shorten the neck, adjust the neck, 
per puppeteer or director preference. So let's get the arms on first. I'm gonna show you how we do that. I'll tip the camera down so you can see the workshop table. What I do is here's the puppet body here, like so. And as I mentioned, the little buttons here on the inside and there on the other side and the shoelace. So I'm gonna find out what the front of the body is. This, uh, this appears to be the front here. So I'll make sure I get the right hand on the right side. So this is the right arm here. Very straightforward. I'm gonna thread it through the little buttonholes here. Now we have two buttonholes here on the inside. Generally now we might even just do one small hole and I'll show you why because of how we thread this. So I'm gonna find the hole here and thread the little plastic nub through, pull it through like so. Same with the other end like so. Now, what we used to do in the past is that we would tie these shoelaces up in a nice knot, and there you go, you're ready to hit the set or the stage. The challenge there is if you do need to make a change, suddenly you're stuck trying to untie a knot in an area that you can't really see, and it's really hard. So this is what we use to attach our puppet arms now. These are little shoelace clips. I don't even know what they're called. You can find them online or in any supplier that sells a shoemaking or shoe repair uh, stores. But this is what we use here. And the great thing about them is they, you thread the laces through the little holes. It looks like a little skull to me, but you thread it through like that. You, com you compress it and thread it through. Same on the other side, thread it through. And then you can cinch that nice and tight. You can draw that little cinch that thing right up to that gasket. Now that's one of the reasons why you wanna have a gasket here. If this was just foam, you would keep pulling and squeezing and you would actually end up losing some of this natural motion that you have. The gasket sort of creates a stop and it's wide enough that you're not gonna pull the arm through. So there you go. Now this is a nice wide neck. These work great for that. Sometimes the neck's a little smaller and tighter, in which case these do have a pretty high profile and then maybe at that point tying it would be best. But I just like these because they're quick. They're easy, they're cheap. You can buy a whole bunch of them at the same time. So anyway, as I mentioned, I'm just showing people how we attach our puppet parts. Uh, some people don't know this, but generally puppet pieces uh, are not permanently attached to each other. So you can have flexibility when you're performing. So I'm gonna attach the second arm here. Once again, shoelace goes through the hole in the fleece. Let's find out which one it is here and through the little plastic uh, disc on the other side, and that one, I think it's the higher one. I'll try the other one here. It's not quite feeding through the way I want it to. There we go, there we go. And through the plastic disc. And th these discs are made out of, of these kind of gasket button things are made out of plastic, but generally we use different types of materials. We've been using rubber. It's similar to this kind of material here it's kind of like a gasket rubber. And these I like better because you can drill a hole out of them. They have a little bit of flex to them, so it'll take the form um, and they're durable as well. So thread that through and now let's thread the other one through. So I would mentioned that sometimes we like to do one hole on the inside. I like that because once you get the two holes, the two things through, the, the you can just cinch it right up um, and it kind of works better in that way, I think. But as I mentioned, this is one of our older puppets. Um, and so we continue to learn and develop and grow and change and come up with new techniques and abandon old ones um, as, we, as we build our puppets. So let's see why this is not coming through. I'm gonna create a little guide here to see where this hole is. I'm just putting a pin through here to see, ah, that's the, I need to be going through right there. So that, I sometimes you can even take this, put it on the edge of the pin and just push the pin through like so and out like that. So, just like so, again, I'm attaching these puppet arms. We do not permanently attach our puppet arms. These are gonna be in, uh, held in place with these shoelaces. So, plastic nubs here, I forget what they're, they're called. They're like little something for shoelaces, but they're perfect for puppets. Thread it through the eyes of the skull. It looks like a skull to me. And cinch that up nice and tight like so. So there you go. So that is how your puppet arms, you now some people for an extra secure hold, they'll actually tie another knot here and here up against that plastic thing. I have found in our time performing puppets in live and theater environments 
that that plastic thing holds just great. If it breaks, replace it with another one. Now let's talk about the puppet head. I mentioned that we have these neck sleeves attached here to the puppet head here. I'm going to show you how we put our neck sleeves in place. Now generally we've, we've been putting our label uh, in the sort of center front or center back of our um, puppet neck sleeves here. But I'm going to thread the neck sleeve through the body, the head, the neck, like so, and then out here this way. Now it's very important that you have this puppet positioned in a way that the head is actually facing forward. Now the reason why I mentioned we like to, um, to not permanently attach this is maybe your character is meant to have a really long neck and that's the joke and that's the funny thing about it. And so it could be accommodated that way. Maybe he's a very, you know, portly fellow who's very like, uh, like a plug, you know, like a spark plug. And so, um, so maybe it's built that way. But by doing this, you can actually adjust the length um, depending upon performer or director um, preference. So let's, uh, I'll demonstrate here how we put our bodies in place. I had mentioned that the interior structure of this body has boning that runs this way and on the other side. And that's gonna be important for this because I'm actually gonna use a very high tech tool known as a safety pin. That's right, most of your favorite puppets that you love from television have heads attached with safety pins. Great for a quick change, cheap, available, but it's actually important that you buy the right kind of safety pin. There's a lot of kind of really chintzy ones out there that you find at like discount retailers, uh, Walmart and Target. Uh, knock to knock those stores, I like them, but these are from Joanne Fabrics. You wanna make sure they're really sturdy. This is a two inch safety pin. <clears throat> the ones that are, um, are not as good, they tend to bend and break and they don't have a good hold. So these are really important. You get a nice, high quality, large safety pin, two inch. So I take my safety pin and I'm going to pin it through the fleece, through the foam, and then around that boning, because that's going to be an extra hold, which is going to be beneficial to me, and up and out the other side. So simply, just like so, once I found that it's pretty centered, the front here, pin through like so, around that boning, up and out the other side, pin it lock it shut like that. Now that's one way to do it. Other people sometimes will um, put a pin um, conversely on the back side. Maybe I will. This is a larger puppet and we might need a little bit of anchoring and security here. So I might as well anchor the back as well. So another safety pin. Again, it's a two inch safety pin is the type that we use through the fleece, through the foam, around that little Rigoline bone, through the next sleeve and back out here. These safety pins, some people ask, but is it secure enough? Uh, it is secure enough, actually. And if it isn't, you know, just add another safety pin or you can replace the one that you have with one that's a little stronger. So here we go, out the other side, boom. And I'm gonna lock that in place like so. So there you go, that is your hold. So that is how we connect puppet arms and a puppet head. You can see now the pieces are all assembled together. It's up to the puppeteer to have fun and create a performance. Have you ever used uh, the same process with fur covered puppets as well? That's a great question. Yes, this is the process we use with fur covered puppets as well. Um, there's really no difference except the outside material is, is a little different. Um, you know, these can be kind of tucked in or tied up if, if you need to, if they're in the way, but generally a puppet will have pants or a tube that'll be disguised and generally the camera's not seen or the stage audience isn't seen below there. So yeah, fur puppets, fleece puppets, the technique is the same, but you can see by isolating the neck and body, I can do some fun things like this. I can also just have a, a general performance. Um, if I put arm rods in here, then I could have a nice performance. If we needed to make a costume change, as I mentioned, head can come off and then you can pull the costume on. I mean, look how large this guy's head is. And sometimes puppet costumes will have a very small neck. So that's why it's important to be able to remove the head from the body and remove the arms from the body. So there you go. Shoelaces, those little funny shoelace clips and two safety pins. And that's how we attach our puppet heads and our puppet limbs. Arms, same way. I mean, legs, same way. You can attach legs the same way, just hanging out the front. Shoelaces, thread it through, a little bit of little gasket there. So. 
there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, we'll be doing more of these live puppet building demonstrations. Follow us also on Instagram, Swazzle Puppet Studio, if you don't already know about that account. We do a lot of puppet building techniques. We show photos and images of our past puppet building work, which you may have seen on shows like Crank Anchors or Waffles and Mochi. Um, and also, we like to share this information. This is the information that we wish was available when we started building puppets when we were kids. And so we like to make this available to people like you who are building puppets on your own. So if you have any questions, of course, feel free to uh, contact us. You can write uh, pu uh, uh, puppets there. I love your Audrey 2 puppets. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. We're actually making a new set of Audrey 2 puppets. Stay tuned. It'll be a, it'll be a while yet, but um, that's going to be a fun project that we're going to document, and that process will be documented here on our YouTube channel. So anyway, I want to um, thank you all for, for uh, watching here, and uh, please follow, like, and subscribe. Check out our puppet interviews. Uh, about every week, we do an interview with a puppet professional, either a writer or a puppeteer or a costumer, working in the professional puppet field. It's called the Swazzle Lunch Break. And those happen um, about every week. And I think we have, some, we have some great guests lined up, which I think you're going to like. You can also go back and watch past guests from past episodes. So thank you so much. And I got to get back to puppet building. Bye.